And if we believe him, if we practice what we say we believe, then we will have a place in his eternal kingdom. Then I look at selfishness. It says that it concerned with your own wishes and need and ignoring those of others. So selfishness is just about me. It goes no further. I don't think about you, your need, your desire. I ignore that. I push that up, up aside. That is selfishness, all about me. So love or selfishness, what would we choose? Or what should we choose? And I'm sure all of us would say love. Because love, it goes way beyond. And that is Sabbath afternoon, love or selfishness. Now we're going to go over to Sunday, and it speaks of a broken-hearted Savior. Can our Savior heart be truly broken? That was the question that I was pondering in my mind. Why? Because I was saying, the one who know our thought before it even enter our minds, the one who know every strand of hair that is upon our head, the one who know us before we were even conceived in our mother's womb. How can this one heart be broken if he knows all of this? He know what gonna happen before. So I was pondering on this, heading a broken hearted savior. Then it brings me back to the constant calling of Jesus because it's stated in 1 John 1 and verse 11. It have given account that Christ have called his people. But guess what happened? They did not heed to the call. He comes to his own, but they receive him not. Right? So he wanted all of us not to end up in this, what would we call it now? You know, it's, um, as my sister says, it's like when you're in a casual mode. You know, like we are just casually going about our daily lives, going about our Christianity. Right. And also, condemnation. Christ does not want us to be condemned. Or he does not want to destroy us. Right? So he was calling us. But we turn a deaf ears, we turn a blind eyes to his calling. In St. Luke, it is recorded that Jesus has warned his people, and the signs, they are everywhere, but they did not heed to his calling. And just like now, in our time, the signs are pointing. Things happen in our home that we live, next door, in our business places, but we still turn a blind eyes to Jesus calling. So we are considered to be a disobedient people. This line from Sunday jumps out at me. God does not always intervene to limit the result of his people's choice. He allows the, the natural consequences of rebellion to develop. God did not call the slaughter of innocent children in the destruction of Jerusalem. The tragedy death of innocent was the act of Satan and not God. 
because of our choices, because of the choices that we have made, it pushes us to end up into a state where either we become, either we are destroyed with the persons who do not accept Christ, or if we make the choice to follow Christ, then we will be saved. And so we're going to move over into yes. Monday. Let me just put a little part to the, to, no, yes, to Sunday. The, a broken hearted savior. So we saw when Jesus was going into Jerusalem, he was going in and we saw all of the, the persons there, they were cheering him, they had what those stuff, they were laying at the, the palm trees, laying at his feet. It was like a rejoice of him coming in. But we saw in the lesson that the Lord was crying. He wept over his children because he had foreknowledge of what's about to happen. He saw the destruction. So now he was trying, I mean, Israel, Jerusalem was a chosen place for, for Christ. There he, he, he sat up. He, there, he, he, there was where he worshipped. There was his chosen people. So you can imagine, I love all of you here, and I, I come to church today, and I'm sitting up here, and I'm looking down there on you, and I'm seeing death, destruction, pain. He, so he was there, and he was coming in, and he was seeing all of this, and he wept, he cried, because he knew what was about to happen, and he was there trying to let his people know what they're supposed to do, but they would not accept that. So that's my thought for Sunday. So now we move on to Monday. And Monday's lesson is entitled, Christian Providentially Preserved. And um, I broke down this in simple language so most of us can really understand. Because this big word, providentially, I had to go and look over that word because I myself didn't know what it means. <laughs> so, the first, so the first thing that I did was, I, 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 I knew this one though. Who is a Christian? So we all know that a Christian is a follower of Christ. And then the big word now, providentially. When we talk about providentially, in the Bible, in the Bible, biblically speaking, it's something that happened miraculous. So when Jesus providentially opens a door, it, it opened like a miracle. He did something that is not norm for any human being to, to get done. So, so, it's something, so sister, you are saying that Christ provide and sometimes when we look at it and think it is impossible that door that Christ opened for it? us it might be a miracle. miracle we see it as miraculous because yes. we did not see no, no way yes. how this could have happened yes. but Christ provide right and then we look at the next word preserve and to preserve something we know is to keep it safe probably from injury probably from destruction probably from evil, like we're talking about Christ, so he probably preserve us from evil doers or yes, whatever is out there to try to get us, right? So I would like to read from the, the notes on Monday, just a little, the first part. So it says, no, no, the first notes. Yes, so it says God's mercy grace providence see we see that words here again because we know that god is merciful we know his grace we can see his grace on our lives every day and his providence that's a miracle that he did for them in jerusalem right so we see that they're saying god's mercy his grace and his providence and foreknowledge there's an next big word foreknowledge so we know that when we hear the word foreknowledge no he had just as you know, we, we, so in, this, in, the, the, in the Sunday lesson, he wept because he's Christ. He saw, he knew what was about to happen. Right. So he had foreknowledge yes. of what was about see to happen. He hand. saw what was about to happen. So we see there where he said he had foreknowledge and clearly revealed in the events leading up to destruction, into the destruction of Jerusalem. Cestius, Gallius, and the Roman armies surrounded the city in an unexpected move. When their attack seemed imminent, they withdrew. I, when, I, when, I, when I was reading this, I had to research some word, Brother Frame, because I saw this word imminent, no, and I'm saying, okay, this word sound important. <laughs> so 
So I went and I researched. So no, right, so now I realize that they were ready, they were prepared for war. It must have been the intervention of God why they did, because he had a plan. So he, he allowed them not to go because remember he gave instructions to his children what to do when, when the soldiers were coming and you understand? So I said, okay, they were prepared, but God, he, he made a plan for his person, people to escape. So I saw where they said the Roman army surrounded the city in an unexpected move when their attack seemed imminent. They withdrew. The Jewish armies pursued them and won a great victory, right? So I know that when I read that, I said that was the hand. That was God providentially preserving his people. So now I move on to, to my note. Well, first I wanted to read from Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, 10. And it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Powerful words. And I, to me, it shows us God's promise to protect. It does not matter how hard things get. He, God, will make a way. Just trust and obey. Brothers and sisters, we have to remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we wrestle against principality, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. In this lesson, we saw Christ handing down warning signs and instructions. And the ones that obeyed were saved. It's the same for us in this day and age. We also saw persecution and Jerusalem going through all these things. But God was saying in Revelation 2.10. So let's just look at Revelation 2.10. It says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days. But be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Yeah. Brethren, he promises, and my God never fails. He never goes back on his word. Right? So, um... We also can look at Hebrews. So in Hebrews, which it shows us. So we are looking back on Hebrews 11, 35, 38. Hebrews 11, 35, 38, and it says, you want to read that for me, Sister King? Or? Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skin sheep, in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves and the earth. Okay, so, so we saw how they actually suffered in that verse. Right. We saw suffering in Jerusalem, right? But we, there we also saw God providentially preserved his people. What I really love about this lesson is that it tells us that we will have rough times. Right. Some may even go through death, mm -hmm. but God keeps reminding us that he's always there. He's always going to be there um, for us. May I ask a question if I am being allowed? When we look at all of this that has been said here, where Jesus said that, be faithful unto death, and when we see where it has been um, said in Hebrews that some of them um, died and the different things that happened to them, we're asking ourselves now as Christians, are we prepared Today. mentally to go through these things as the disciples had done? Because when I look, I say we are a bit comfortable, and if there's a little fuss in church, we're not come back. We're not coming back. Yet, we say that we are preparing for our tribulations and torture and all these things. Um, and I realize that we love luxurious lives. None of us want to be inconvenienced or want to be uncomfortable. So we want posh houses and nice cars and foods on our tables all along. We don't want to suffer. Do you think that um, many of us will follow because of the kind of mindset that we have in this age and time? 
Brother Frem, some of us will fall, because as we saw, even with, 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 Jesus, with uh, Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt, we saw the amount of miracle that Jesus allowed Moses to perform. And we saw them going back each time something so they would want happen. to go back into Egypt. They and want the, the melon and all yeah, those things. We are, no, we are no better than the Israelites. We are just the same. So we know that some of us will fall. But as Christians, we are called to be strong. We are called to remember our Christ. And but do you think we are prepared for that tribulation? As Jesus said, tribulation will come, but be strong. We, do you we, think we, as Christians, Seventh-day Adventist Christians, people of Negro Church, we, do you think we are prepared for tribulation, though? Brother Frame, we, we, all, we can't answer for everybody, but we, what we can do is we can prepare ourselves and help others to be prepared. Because remember, being a Christian, oh, you can't answer for me and I can't answer amen, for amen, you. Amen. So we have to be strengthened. I can strengthen myself and help to, stay, to strengthen Sister Stacy. And then that is where, and, and the word. When I read, I was saying to somebody, that when I read the first time I read the great controversy, I saw where Jesus told them that, Time is going to come where they're going to have to eat their children. My God. And I, I read where the time came in Jerusalem. when the, the mothers were fighting their husband for food. The mothers had to eat their children to survive. And My trust God. me, when I think about that, I know that the time is going to come again. So we have to learn to stand steady in the name of Jesus. Amen. and know that even if we're dead, he's coming. When I look, I wanted to bring across the story of Joseph. Anybody know the story of Joseph, right? And how his brothers, and how his brothers sold him. But we see, we saw how God preserved him. Amen. Yes, we saw what happened there. All right, so let, let me just. As hands are going up. And then, and then preparation of the heart don't come from mankind. Jesus have it. Jesus have 70 of them walking with him. And when Jesus turned to them and said, you're going to eat my flesh. If you don't eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't fit for the kingdom of heaven. And so much of them turn away because their heart never ready for that as yet. So likewise, us today, our, our preparation of our heart don't come from man, but it comes from God. So God will have to prepare our heart to face those days to come upon us, the tribulation, the persecution. Because all the temptation that we've been through today is that nothing comparing to if you're really serious about the gospel and going out there to the dining world to preach it, you will lose your life. Let me just reply to something. Um, yeah, I know right. Elder Frame was saying, you know, are we prepared for what is to come upon us? Will we stand? You know, like we have some of the examples of these, pers these Christians. Yeah. When, you know, they will stand up for God. Right. But things that happen to us during this age, we must take it as, um, as a stepping stone and realize that God is trying to build us. Right. We think about COVID. We think now about other, little, other disasters that happen. Right. And these things are not just coincidence. Even the thing that, you know, what we are going through in Negril now, water. Right. Water, which is, you know, is life. Base is very essential. And I don't know sometimes if you don't sit down and think about it as a thing as water, which is so essential. What if it comes to a certain time and, you know, they say you have to do certain things. Will you abide by what they say or stand by the word of God when they will withdraw these things from you? So every little thing we want to take them as an example, as something that God is using to prune us. To, 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 be, to be to that stage of perfection. Yes. Yes. And also what we have to remember as Christians, we are not immune to these things. Just like how these things come up on the unrighteous, things will happen to the righteous just the same. We are not immune to death. We are not immune to suffering. We are not immune to imprisonment. We are not immune to torture. It's just that what we have to do, make sure, make sure that when these things come up on us, it's for the sake of Christ. And we're going to move on to Tuesday now. So Tuesday, Tuesday says, faithful amid persecution. 
So that's, that's a pretty heavy, heavy topic when it says faithful amid persecution. First, when I think about that, um, that topic there, comes to mind is the commission that we are given. As it says in Matthew 28, that we are to go ye therefore and teach all the nations, baptizing them. You know, in the name of the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So we know all these things. We know that we are commissioned. So we know that we have a purpose. Mark 16 again reminded us. He said, Mark 16, 15, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we know. So this should be the motivation that drives us. So it says here, as I'm going to just read a little bit, it says, throughout the early centuries of Christianity, the Christian church grew rapidly despite imprisonment, torture, persecution, faithful believers tot totally committed to Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaimed his word with power, lives, lives, lives were changed, and tens and thousands were converted. Of course, this, these scriptures here, Matthew and Mark, which commission us and gives us our, our, our quota to go on and what we must do as Christians, would, would have encouraged them. In Acts 2 and 41, Acts 4, and also Acts 4 and 4, it tells us through all the tribulations and everything, when it comes to the point of Pentecost, then you understand that the church starts to grow due to the Holy Spirit. So it says the disciples, the disciples at some point though face threats. The disciples did face threats, threats, yes, but by the priests. These priests were like the Sadducees, the you know, captain of the temple. They faced threats. So as they were there preaching the word of God, of course they have a problem because they don't want the people to overthrow their dominion because they claim, you would claim a certain dominion when they would have a certain power in you know, controlling the narrative of the time. And so, in Acts 8, 1 to 8, it speaks of a great persecution that was against the church in Jerusalem. Everyone, it says, everyone was scattered abroad. Of course, they were dragged out of their homes, out of the temples. They were dragged and they were imprisoned, imprisoned for carrying on the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, during this time, though, they were encouraged to go forth and to evangelize even more so. And as we know, in Acts 2 and 41, we know that the church multiplied. We know that 3,000 gave their lives on the day of Pentecost. We know that another 5,000 gave their lives as this persecution would strengthen them as they go along. All right, I want, wait a minute, brother, brother um, Lewis. So this provides for the movement. What I want to think about is the persecution here, when you think about the persecution of Stephen. Stephen was persecuted in such a way that when you think about it, the Christians who were there on looked on and see the effort made by Stephen, the work that he carried out, and even when he was pulled out of his home, as he was warning the priests and these scribes and the Sadducees, as he was warning them and telling them, you need to change your lives. You need to ad adhere to the word of God. The way that you are dealing with things, the way that you are teaching the people is not right. And he, 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 he would command, would not command them, but he would tell them, there is a consequences to their action and that they, are, they would have to answer to God. So, in this case now, they take him and they stone him. One of the persons that stoned Stephen was actually Saul. No, not Saul, but he is now Paul, as he was Saul before. But he, he was the one who put forth the command for the persons to take him and stone him. When he was stoned, what happened? He then turned around and forgave them and asked God, forgive them. So when, when, 
when that was said and done, that now would strengthen the church in Israel. And they would go on to say, what type of man is this? This man must be of God. Why, after all these things happened to him, he have in his heart to forgive this man. And so this brings forth a revelation right then and there. So um, I just want to say this, amid our going out and, you know, coming in as Christians, sometimes we go through persecutions and certain things. And we'll think to ourselves, you know, if we are Christians, why do we go through certain things? Where is God? But sometimes we have to understand God, God brings us through certain situations to prune us. And he knows just about the thing that in us that needs to come out. So he'll allow us to go through these things. And I remember something in Ministry of Healing. Won't be long. I know we are running for time. In Ministry of Healing, it says, it is because God is leading, leading us. That's why these things come, on up, come upon us. It says, trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of, dis of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. He who reads the hearts of men knows their characters better than they themselves know them. He sees that some have powers and susceptibles which, rightly directed, might be used in the advancement of his work. In his providence, he brings these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for the service. Often he permits the fires of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. So that's what we are going through when we're going through whatever. So let us stay faithful during persecution. We are, we are, we are strapped for time. So we are kind of running along. Sorry, we do apologize to the persons who really want to get involved. So I'm going to just to jump off into Wednesday now, because time is against us. So Wednesday's lesson is caring for the community. The first thing I really want to touch when you think about caring for the community, brothers and sisters, we have to make ourselves a walking testimony. We have to walk the gospel, talk the gospel, dress the gospel, because every aspect of our life is a ministry when we call ourselves children of God. Because first thing you think of, if you're a child of God, the minute you steps out on the road, somebody should point on you and know that this is a child of God. How you carry yourself should tell them that you are a Christian. Right? So we talk, do, do, just touching base on that part. So now we are, I'm going to go straight to my notes. So when Jesus was on earth, we saw him ministering to the gospel, ministering the gospel, but not only to we saw Jesus ministering on earth. We saw him ministering the gospel, but not only that, we saw him ministering to the needs of the community. Not only to his followers, but all persons that he came in contact with. And when he ascended, his disciples ministered the same way he did. Let us turn our eyes to Acts 2, 44. Let us do this a bit fast. So it says, Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all. As many had needs, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food. So we saw them sharing and caring for each other. No, we are called to do the same here. We are called to go, not just care for ourselves as brothers and sisters, but oh, those are on the outside. Because that's the only way we can minister to their needs, to get them to be a part of the kingdom of Christ. So we have, when we call ourselves Christian, we have to be out there doing the work. Yes. I'm sorry, we are out. Time is up. Finish All right. Us. So in summary of everything that we have done, I think on Sabbath afternoon, we can say love, love conquers all, 
Uh, and in Tuesday, we can, we can do a takeaway word. My takeaway word is faithful and Thursday and Friday. Persecution helps to build us. It helps to direct us. It helps us to have more faith in Christ. Because when trouble come upon us, it points us right back to Christ. Because we know that he is the source of all things. And no don't matter how your husband, your wife, your children can comfort you. You cannot find a better peace in comfort more than when Christ comforts us. And as my sister have said, because of time, we know we are pressed for time. We are unable to take all the hands that have gone up. But I do hope that all of us have learned something, learned something and take away something from this week lesson. Let us persevere, brethren, and let us help to build each other. And based on the question that Brother Frame have asked, it's an individual question. But when we come together like this, we help to strengthen each other and to direct each other into the kingdom of God. And before we leave, I just want to leave a Bible verse with you. So that's James 2, 15 and 17. And it reads, suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, the faith by itself, if it is not occupied by action, is dead. Please, we have to be our brother's keeper. Not just in the church, but outside of the church. That's the only way we are going to go forward. We are called to be a walking gospel. Our life shows the gospel of Christ. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Thank you. Let's thank our sisters very much for do doing our lesson review so ably in such a good way that we can understand and know what happened to those in the past. As children of God, it won't be a secret or won't be any different because we have to stand for Christ as true children of God. Welcome back to Sabbath School. Welcome back, my brothers and sisters and visiting friends. Our team for this morning, does God hear all our prayers? And as we know that, we all pray and ask God to be there for us and to do whatever we want to do. And at times we do not see what's happening. We say God don't answer our prayer. But in Isaiah 59 verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither his ears heavy that he cannot hear. So my brothers and sisters, God is able, he loves and cares for us, and he will answer our prayer. At this time, we'll have our welcome by Brother Audley Green. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is good to be in the presence of God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. It is good to be a family of God. And even if we don't see each other during the course of the week, today we are looking at each other. It is a blessing from God. So I want you to know that there is no place in this world like this place that God has set aside for a set of people who believe and trust in him. Let I see the hand of anyone visiting with us today. Anyone is visiting. God bless you. God bless you. You are in the right place amongst the right people. I guarantee you that. Amen. Let us stand and sing our greeting song. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome, 
to the Holy Spirit that in our midst that take up residence in our heart. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. 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 We are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again, in one accord. Oh, something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We are together again, just praising the Lord. Oh, we are together again. bless you. Have yourself a happy and a holy Sabbath day. Rest in peace in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Brother Green, very much for welcoming our Sabbath school. I hope we do feel comfortable and feel filled with the Holy Spirit. And I must say thanks to all the persons who participate in the Sabbath school for helping to make it a success and that we all can work together in Jesus. And, it is, and at this time, our Sabbath school considered closed. But before we do so, we'll have a special song by Brother Tauburn who will draw the curtain down. Have yourself a blessed and holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Shall we praise the Lord? He's worthy to be praised. As the lesson was saying, God answers all prayers. I'd, whether, wait, yes or no, that's an answer. Mm. I have many tears and sorrows. I've have question for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gives blessed consolation that all my trials only make me strong. Through it all.
church let us not fool ourselves as I have said that many of us have our own head to think you don't have to borrow it from anybody now the Bible said in all thou gettest get, in, get understanding you see I'm going to get Jesus if you don't get understanding you're not a problem I want to forget to me as a brethren. You know how much people buy a car. And when they buy a car because they do not understand. They get in a trouble and accident. Car turn over with them. Car kill them. Understanding is imperative. You cannot live the life that counts for righteousness. Unless it is, be, it is being understood. The proceeding. Understood. The protocol. Because that which is, that is going to give a directive. And the Bible also shows us that Christ will give us the Holy Spirit. He which will guide us into all truth. So if a man cannot tolerate his brother, and that's why in the word of Jeremiah, through the Spirit of God said, if you cannot run with the footmen, or you're going to run with the horsemen, if in the land where you plan to build your house after you go to America, work hard, build your house, and to settle down, when you hear gunshots start fire around, you start ball and leave your house. What it is saying, Virgin, to eat us here, if we do not understand, we cannot serve God like the way we are to. When persecutions come, they cannot stand up. And that's why every boxer, Every boxer have a doctor. Every boxer have a nutritionist. Which will teach you what to build the muscles. What to cause you to think. What to cause you to be active. The doctor is going to prescribe the kind of food that you eat. That will give you a proper eyesight. Because the man will thump off your head. So if in this church... We cannot tolerate our brothers and sisters. We cannot show love and compassion. When persecution comes, you curse all God. Brethren, when the Bible says, train up a child in the way it should grow. You see, when you baptize, if you don't take the training, if you don't get the training, if you don't have the interest, because some of we can't go away and make life, some of we go up our eel on the zip. I hope a jungle. I hope a roots bamboo. Then kick me out. So the best place to consider my yasa. But not just consider. Make sure you make and utilize 
the word of God for your benefit. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? When the Bible says many are called and few are chosen, there's no joke about it. We serve not church yet, brethren. Brother Lewis, we serve not church yet, and God help. So what we are saying is, brethren, is that make sure as the Bible has been stated, it is being stated. Let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. And when you meet Christ, don't care all your life used to dirty. You're not busy what nobody wants about you. You go in all the world and preach the gospel because evangelism is important. If you cannot try to break the heights with your neighbor, where you live, side. Oh, yeah, go to go do evangelism. And brethren, let us examine ourselves if you are in the faith or not. It is a brethren, no for we know say. We know right. And that's why hypocrisy again is not good. What a privilege we have to ask forgiveness of our sins and set it right with God. Because all people view us is not the way God views us. I'm encouraging us, brethren, to live a life. And if you live a life, the motivation will chip in and you will tell somebody about the wonderful plan that God has for them, and for them, the plan of salvation. Don't care your state, God will bless you. Shall we stand as we pray? Love, wonderful, wonderful, the love of Christ to me. Shall we bow our heads to pray? Dear Lord, creator of heaven and earth, we bow before you and we ask that you will give us understanding. The term that is being used, bow before you with reverence because we are communicating with a mighty God and we have forgiveness of our sins so that our prayers can come up to you. Father, you have given every man a head to think. And you have also said, any man lack knowledge, let him ask unto God that give it. So that, Lord, we don't come here. Jesus, we remember that in persecution, even the people came us. Saul was a Sabbath keeper and he stand there and see they persecute Stephen fulfilling the 2,000 churches prophecy as come to what is being said. Father, we have been deteriorated to become to this taste in your mouth that you say we neither hot nor cold and you will spew us out. From then till now, Lord, we need to examine ourselves and know that we are far away from you because of what come in the church, come in among us, what we take in, and we want to be called child of God. Let us examine ourselves. Let us do better. Let us live a life that comes for righteousness. Don't care what the situation is, Lord. Give us the strength who desire Many are called, but few are chosen. Who desire to live? Bless us, we pray, and be merciful unto us. Those who do not see that we'll have a place in your kingdom. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen, sir. Please be seated. Good morning, brethren. First, let me say a big thank you 
to the panel for carrying us through the lesson so ably. I want to say a big thank you to the three ladies. They did a fantastic job. You can see that a lot of research went into their work. And I want to ask them to continue to research, continue to study, and always be willing to share God's words. Amen? Let me say a big thank you to all the individuals who rallied around Sister Gifford just a while ago. We saw what was happening. Some of you may be oblivious to what was happening. She fainted. She was not well. We had to call the ambulance, and she's off for the hospital. We ask for your prayer on her behalf. We ask that you pray for the husband. Pray that God will bring a favorable outcome to her situation and that her health will be improved. And you know, the more we are together, the happier we shall be. So we have to stand with each other. And I want to say, ladies, I really admire the way you attended to the sister. I saw some expression of love and care extended to the sister, and I'm so happy. I'm so elated. Let me not call any name, but let me say, ladies, I'm so happy for what I saw given to the, to the sister not too long ago. As I said, she's off to the hospital. Let us pray for her and pray for her husband. And let us continue to remember the sick among us. You know, one thing with us as human beings, we can't escape illnesses and we can't escape death. I think it's in Job 4, it says, man born of a woman is but few days and full of trouble. You know, that word trouble means problem, illness. All kinds of situations will come upon us. So we can't escape it. And so Paul said, if it was in this life only that we have hope in Christ Jesus, we would have been like men most miserable. So hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We dare not trust the sweetest frame, even brother frame, eh? but holy lean on Jesus' name. All other ground is sinking sand. And so our, our, our admonition to you is to hold on to that unchanging hand of God. And we're encouraging you, brethren, come out to church and let us worship together. And even if you believe you are a hypocrite, come out to church. Even if you believe that you are good for nothing, come out to church. Respect of how you see yourself, come out to church. Because Jesus has made it clear that I never came to call the one. The righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Jesus will come call a righteous man like Brother Green because he's my righteous man already. But he'll come call one dirty man like Brother Freem, who will have no good. So if you think you are no good, come to church. If you think you come at the worst in the, in, in, in the week, still come to church. And tell it to who? To Jesus. And you know, David has made it clear that he preferred to fall in the hands of God than in the hands of men. You know why? Men will bring you down to destruction. But, Brother Hillman, before you sin, God knew that you were going to sin today at 9.30. So God will have already made um, provision to deal with your sinfulness. So he would have extended his mercy a long time before you even sin. So he said, let us come what? Boldly. How should you come? Boldly to the throne of grace. So Bridget, I'm begging you. Even if you think you are the worst of sinner, like Paul said, chief of sinner, I am. Still come to church. Even Brother Lewis come up here and say, dirty sinner. Let no listen Brother Lewis. Come to church. I'm telling you, just as it is, come to church. Because I hear, say, you must come. This is a hospital for everybody. Whether you're good or bad, this is a hospital. You're coming to meet Jesus Christ, and only him can change you. The leper can't change himself. Now the Ethiopian is complexion, but Jesus can. Yes. Yes. Amen. So if your heart condemns you, Jesus not condemn you, right? God is able. So let us, you know, come out to church and worship. Let us come 
and, and, and give it to God and tell it to him and he will pardon you. Let us remember the sick among us. So many of us are not well. We come to church, but our bodies are not well. But there are some who can't come. I went Sunday and I visited a number of individuals. It was a solo move, of solo visitation. I went by myself otherwise. That's what the words solo mean, one. And I went by Sister Lynn and she's in good spirit. I spent about an hour or more with her and we chatted. And we reminisced. And some good old days in the church and all of that. And we had a good time. I prayed with her and she felt good. Let us remember her in our prayer. I went by Brother Bal and I spent a good time with the family. Unfortunately, though, Brother Bal will not be able to come to church. Maybe for now because of certain unique situation that he's in. Let me repeat. He will not be able to come to church physically because he's in a unique situation. But let us remember her in our prayers. Sister Green, let us remember her also in our prayers. As you know, her situation with arthritis, not being able to move, her mom has to be attending to her and assisting her in almost every aspect. Let us remember her in our prayer. Brother Obi is under the flu. Um, let us remember him also in our prayers. Now, pastor has um, come up with a, a brilliant idea, and I just want you to listen it. We realize that among us as a district, we have recurring issues with illnesses in our churches. Our brethren are being ill, our brethren have their health issues, and financing has become a real issue, a real issue. So we have come up with something known as a health fund for the district, the Sheffield District of Churches, where we contribute to that fund. And that fund is there to help individuals who are most in need, let me repeat, individuals who are most in need of medical help. Not everybody will be able to benefit from the fund, but those needs that are desperate and severe and really needs that kind of attention or help, the fund is there for that purpose. So every Sabbath, one Sabbath of every month, we will collect an offering that will go directly to the fund. And all the churches will do that. And individually, you can make a contribution to that fund. So if you feel, Brother Green, that you're generous and you want to give a million dollars to that fund, do that. It is going for a worthy cause. Sister um, Tarburn, if you feel you can give four million dollars, go in your bank account and if you feel generous, do that. If Brother Frame can, if Brother Frame can only give five hundred thousand dollars, do that. Or if he can only give one one dollar, do that. And, and Sister Lot there, if she can bail out all her account and give the 10 million in there, do that. No problem, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof from the world and they that dwell there. But what, what I'm saying, let us contribute to the fund because right now the fund is helping individuals. We will not call names because that's not what we're here for. But the fund is active and is full, fulfilling the purpose for which it has been created. So we're going to collect an offering when I'm through. And the offering will be to the fund directly. To the fund directly. Not to church building. We will omit the church building um, collection. We'll collect just for the fund today. Now, let me remind you that we're in a water crisis. And we're asking you to use the water that we are purchasing. Every week we have to purchase water to be used on Saturdays. And it is costing us. So let us supervise the children as they go to the bathrooms to use it. And you yourselves, use your discretion in using the bathroom. See to it that you don't leave the top on, running, and wasting the water. And additionally, we're encouraging you to walk with your own drinking water. Buy your bottle of water Friday to bring to church to drink today. Because as it is now, we are our, our, our neighbor to purchase those five gallons containers to provide water for everybody. It's gonna run out very quickly and easily given the volume of people who are using it and who are at church. So walk with your own water to drink to quench your thirst. And um, we're also reminding you of nightly meetings. Wednesday night we had a good time. I came late, but when I came, Sister Raquel was wrapping up. I came and I saw a good amount of individuals and I must say congratulations, and I'm encouraging you to come out. Bridget, come out on Wednesday night. 
Sister Raquel is responsible. She will ask us from time to time to speak at different times, different nights, and so forth. Cooperate with her. When she approaches you, cooperate. It is for the benefit of all of us. But let us remember our Wednesday night meetings. As it is now, we put our Sunday nights on pause, and we are concentrating on our Wednesday night meeting. We have not gone back to full um, nightly meetings, so we concentrate on our Wednesday night meetings. So bear that in mind. Remember, on the 28th of this month, the last Sunday of this month, will be Brother Max's funeral. will be held right here at 11 o'clock. Um, am I right? On the 28th of this month. And the burial will take place in Great Valley, a community in Great Valley where he's from. And Sister Lushane's luncheon on the 24th, which is just a few days away. Remember now, final as I go, and I need to go, our food basket, brethren. Sister Jackie informed me this morning that since we have started this program, we have issued 47 packages. Put your hands together for that man. 47 packages. Almost every week, Sister Jackie is handing out packages to individuals who are in need. And brethren, when you go to the supermarket on Fridays, if I have one pound of flour, bring it come drop me the food basket. We're not coming to give it to Sister Jackie. We're going to make sure that the container is right here. So when you come in, just drop it in the container. I try my best to remember when I go to the supermarket on a Friday to bring something. Please, people are benefiting. Last week I went over with Sister Jackie and she dropped off a lovely package for somebody and I felt good that the church is doing something. And we're not only doing it for our brethren, it is a community project. So if you know of people in the Negro community who are in need, let Sister Jackie know, let Brother Thorber know, let the deacons know, let Brother Betty know and the various individuals and myself, and we will arrange for that outreach assistance to those individuals. Thank you. That's it for now. Um, we will sing while we collect our health fund contributions. Give generously once per month. We'll do this and send it off to the individuals responsible. Can we sing a song? What song can we sing? Um, drummers, drummer, uh, musicians. Let us sing. Give it in love, store it above. Give it with a willing heart, and then we turn over to the praise team. Go ahead. The windows of heaven are open, and the blessings are for
Jesus pray. Our great God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us here today another blessed and holy Sabbath day where we have the opportunity to worship you freely. And as we worship you, Lord, we pray that our worship will not be in vain. Thank you for being with us. We ask that you continue to be with us throughout the rest of the days, my prayer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is excellent. God is excellent, God. We are here to worship, and we're going to ask, we welcome you all to church, those online. We want to welcome you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And as we go into our praise and worship, we ask that you forget about yourself, concentrate on him, and worship him. Amen? There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know.
on, everybody. Welcome. We are going to welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You're our most welcome. We are in your presence. Oh, oh, no. Fill us with your
shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
righteousness and shout for joy all ye that are upright in art. Glory be to the Father. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we want to say thank you for bringing us here to worship your high and your most holy name. Lord, it's not because of the good things while we are here, but because of your grace and your mercies towards us. Take full control of today's service, and when things and time shall be no more, help us all to be safe in your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Hebrews 13, verses 15 and 16 says, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God sacrifice of praise, the fruit of the lips that open profess the name, and do not forget to do good things. Share with others, for such sacrifices God will be pleased. When the peace of Christ rules in our heart, thankfulness overflows. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're thankful to be in the house of the Lord today, let's lift your hands and praise the Lord. Let's lift your hands and give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Please stand with your hymnal in hand and turn to the hymn number 304. That's 304. Faith of our fathers.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, saints of God. God is good. And all the time, indeed, our God is always an excellent God. Now, the privilege is mine this morning to welcome each and every one of you present this morning in the house of the Lord. A very special welcome to those of you joining us online. And of course, a very special welcome to you, our members. Now, I have a list here of some extra special persons who are here in our presence today, and we want to acknowledge them as best as possible. Now, when I call the names, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hands so that you may be acknowledged and we can identify you. Now, the first person I have on my list is Liebert Campbell from the United States. Amen. Amen. Cleveland Campbell from Red Ground. Amen. We have Don Nelson from Good Hope SDA. Amen. We have Hesia Grant from Aldair SDA. Amen. We have Josephine Campbell from Footprints SDA. Amen. We have Arlene Burnett from Lucy. Amen. Welcome. And we have Donovan Garden from Red Ground. Amen. Now, if I didn't call your name and you're visiting us this morning, a very, very special welcome to you also. And as one famous man would always say by the name Elder Green, there is no other place better than this place that you could have found yourself today than in the house of the Lord. And so I wish and I hope and I know that the blessing that you came here for today that you will surely receive it. At this time, I invite you to stand as we sing our welcome song. Be seated. Now for our announcements for Sabbath April 13, 2024. Now today is being recognized as a publishing day. Next Sabbath will be celebrated as Possibilities Day, April 27th will be New Converts Day. May 4 will be celebrated as Community Services Day. And May 4 will also be our communion service. 
May 25th will be Children's Day, and June 8th will be Women Ministries Day. Now, our Wednesday night prayer meeting continues at 7.15 p.m. Benevolent Fund members, please be reminded of your commitments, and you may see Sister Mary Don also if you need to settle. Women, all women, please meet with Sister Ruth Moore immediately after divine service. So all women, please meet with Sister Ruth Moore immediately after divine service. Now, Pathfinder meeting continues tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. sharp. Pathfinders, please also be reminded to visit Miss Winsome to take your respective measurements. Now, the funeral service for Elder Harold McIntosh will be held right here on Sunday, April 28th at 11 a.m. Interment follows at the family plot in Great Valley, Hanover. The Sheffield District Federation will be having an online district Vesper service for the month of May. The dates are May 3rd, May 17th, and May 31st. Beginning May 1st through to the 31st, our children and youth will be taking part in what is referred to as 31 days of connecting with heaven. So children and youth, please prepare yourselves to take part in this initiative. Continue to pray for our brothers and sisters, those who are ill and are in need of prayer, and of course, continue to pray for our shuttings. Please also take note that Sister Ralph is now out of the hospital, so those who are able to visit, please do so. Now at this time, I have a membership transfer, and I will go ahead and do the first reading for you. Now this is coming from the Retirement SDA Church, and it is dated and sent to the Negro Seventh-day Adventist Church. It reads as follows. Whereas Otasia Parkinson is desirous of uniting with your body, this is to certify that the said Otasia Parkinson is a member of the church in good and regular standing. So this is the first reading. We'll proceed with the second reading next Sabbath. I also want to make mention of some birthday celebrants in the house. I want to say happy birthday to Little Grub. Is Little Grub here with us this morning? He's sleeping, okay. So that's Giovante Grub. And we also have Samoya Pears. Is Samoya Pears here? So they will be celebrating their birthdays next week. Well, this coming Tuesday. And so we want to wish them a happy birthday. And of course, I'm going to invite you to just sing happy birthday for them. You can stand somewhere. Happy birthday. today do enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath sense of God. Happy Sabbath sense of God. We know that music play a very important part in worshiping. We now have a special song by Sister Beckford. Sit down and relax and enjoy your moment.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I started to think on life's journey and the ways for years. So many disappointments in my life. Tears run down my face. Then I heard coming through for you 
weren't ready. Let's go again. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. All right. And happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. All right. Now, this morning's story is a short and what? As I always say, short and spicy. All right. Now, this morning's story is about sharing. No. Have you ever gone to school and left your lunch money? Or you've left your lunch? I see the hands. You left yours? And what happened when you left yours? One of my taxi go for it for me. Wow, you're living the life. One of your taxi go for it. You heard that, mommy? All right. What happened? I don't eat from canteen. All right. She don't eat from canteen, so she have her own, her own homemade meal. What, what about you? I eat from canteen. All right. She eat from canteen and the other one don't. All right. So this story is about a little girl. Let's call this little girl Gabby. Now one day Gabby went to school and she was all happy doing her assignment. But guess what? As Jamaican would say online viewers, breaks time come. But she had no break. Mm -hmm. But she drank some water and she made it through. Lunch time came and guess what? One of her friends or her classmates noticed that she didn't have any lunch. And she said, Gabby, you have no lunch, a bear. By the way, online viewers, that's what Jamaican children does, okay? No. Luckily enough, her teacher overheard the conversation. Come right beside me. And right beside me, beautiful, right beside me. And when teacher heard that she had no lunch, what did you think teacher did? Give him some. Give him some. What else she would buy lunch for her. Wow. Give her money. Give her money, and I hope it's US dollars, all right? She never gave her mama. Mommy never gets any lunch money. Okay, but teacher stepped in and helped. What did you think teacher did when she didn't have any lunch? I buy her something from talk shop. Wow, look at you. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. So you're all following the story. Yes. Guess what? All of a sudden, when Gabby had no lunch, a lunch bag came just like this one. Now let's see what's in the lunch bag. Just hold this for me for a second, online viewers. Let's see what's in the bag. All of a sudden, I'm gonna hold it up for you. She got an orange. What else is in the bag? One of our favorite juice. We love this juice. All right. And guess what? She even got an egg sandwich. A whole sandwich, you know? And my favorite, a mortar. All right. So you see, when we share with each other, guess what happens? Did you think Gabby was happy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so Gabby was happy. She got more than enough. And guess what? Jesus also shared with us too, you know? You thought that Jesus shared while he was here on earth? And guess what? Don't forget this, boys and girls. The good book tells us, turn around right beside me. The good book tells us it is blessed to do what? To give than to what? So, boys and girls, it may not be your lunch, but you can share with your brothers and your sisters too, right? You share too? All right. It could be that you can help out your neighbor. You can share with your neighbor. Maybe you get two bananas. You can share one of them, right? So as you go throughout your school time for the coming week, what, what, what are we going to do this week? Share. We're going to share. All right. It could be a lunch. It could be to help somebody with their assignment, their, their schoolwork. But we're going to share. Will you share this week? What? Will you be sharing this week? Yes. All right. So. I will share too. You would share too? Yes. All right. And you would share too? I will share my break on my water. All right. And don't forget to drink your water and share your water. So boys and girls, as you go throughout this week, don't forget to? Share. Let's go again. As you go throughout this week, don't forget to? Share. All right. Who would like to pray for us this morning? Not just, not just those who are inside church here, but those who are online watching to the cameras right now. We want to also pray for those boys and girls. Somebody who has never prayed before. 
All right, I'm going to give you a chance to pray for us this morning, okay? So pray for all of us as boys and girls here. The adults, you see, turn around. See the adults, pray for them too, and the ones who are watching online too, all right? Let's go. Close our eyes, boys and girls. Let's be silent. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and days of the our trespass against us. Lead us not into in temptation, lead us from evil forever. And the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That's you sharing just now, boys and girls. Go back to your seat quietly and don't forget to share. Jesus loves the little children. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, yes, I am here this morning to let you know that there is something about to happen in the air. I don't know if you can see, but I am looking at some things that are about to take place in our world. But I'm not here to tell you about that this morning. I am here to let you know that it's time to return our tithes and our offering. That, you know, so something, you know, some people, you know, like... I'm not busy with the pastor. Pastor can't stay there because me want money too. So it's like a pastor, you return it too. Then you have the Eden out of the road that say, I'm not to return no money because of pure money, they want up a church. And let me tell you something, believers, if it don't happen to you and you can't share the same sentiment like me, then you, can, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if it happened to you, then you will know what I'm talking about. When you return your tithes and offering, God bless you so much that you cannot understand it. Whenever time you feel to return your tithes and offering, like me, the pistol car no stop broke down and me have to spend the money for the pistol car. Believe me. So, God love a cheerful giver. In Malachi 7, in the last line, them, them, them fierce with the, with the minor prophet and say, Where must we return? And then Malachi 8, you hear them say, Which part will rob God in tithes and offering? And then in the Malachi 9, God said, oh no, curse with a what? A curse. And then Malachi 10 said, God said, bring all of the store here. And look if me do open up windows of heaven and pour you down a blessing. You not even have room to restore it. Believe in God, trust in God's word, and do what God said, and you will see the result. Let us pray. Divine God and our Father, have mercy upon us. Continue to lead us, Jesus. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We are about to return what you bless us with, Jesus. I pray that you may help us to return it with a willing heart. Be merciful unto us and continue, Jesus, to provide for us what we cannot provide for ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the trio is here to sing honor and praise and glory to God. If it has no
Happy Sabbath, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from Hebrew 11, 1 to 4. We'll read it in your hearing. Hebrews 11, 1 to 4. No faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God, so that things which are were not made of things which do appear. For and last, by faith Abel offered unto God a more ex excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. of your people, dear God. Lord, a lot of us, oh God, are going through rough times. But Lord, we know in whom we trust and in whom we believe. And so, Lord, I ask today, oh God, 
Yes, oh God, the ship may be rocking and the sail may be torn. But Lord, help us, oh God, to stay in the ship, dear Father, because we know who is the captain of our ship. I pray today, oh God, that you will continue to lead us in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I ask, oh God, that you will continue to be with Negro Church. And as we continue to worship your oh God, help us to do so in spirit and in truth. Lord, today we need a word from you. We need to hear from you, dear Father God. And as we continue on this journey, dear Father, we pray that you will stand by us, dear God. That you will lead us according to your will, dear Father God. Because, Lord, when we listen to the things that are happening, and when we see the signs, oh God, they are appearing here, there, and everywhere, it tells us, dear Father God, that you are soon to come. And so, even now, dear Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you will keep our mind heavenward. You will help us, oh God, to continue knowing that, oh God, you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Today, Lord, we pray, oh God, for those that are sick. Remember Sister Gifford, oh God. Remember Sister Ruff, oh God. Remember Brother Bal, dear Father, and all the rest, dear Jesus. Lord, I place them into your hands even now, dear Father. We know, dear God, that you are the great physician, the sympathizing one. And whatever your children are going through now, dear God, we know, dear Father God, that one of these days, all these things will come to an end. And so, Father, Lord, we place you in charge of each and every one, dear God. And we pray, dear Father God, that you will work mightily for your people, dear God. I ask even now, oh God, that you will be with the waiting congregation even now. Oh God, as we wait to hear a word from you, disappoint us not, dear Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will continue, oh God, to lead your people all right. Father God, I pray for the speaker now, Lord. I pray that you will anoint him from the crown of his head unto the sole of his feet, dear God. That whatever he will speak today to your people, dear Father God, it will not be his word, but your word, oh God. It will come from your throne room of grace. Because in a time like this, oh God, every word that we hear, oh God, we want it to be blessing to each and every one of us, dear Father God. That we will continue, oh God, to run this race with patience, looking unto you as the author and the finisher of our faith. Continue to bless this church, oh God. Continue to bless your people near and far, oh God. Remember all the visitors there, Father God. I ask for a special blessing for each and every one of them today. And that they will go home rejoicing, knowing that they have heard, oh God, your word. Father God, take full control and be with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Just to add to the announcement, there will be an eye clinic at Good Hope um, SDA Church tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Cost is only $2,500. Once again, there will be an eye clinic at Good Hope SDA Church tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. The cost is only uh, $2,500 to test your eyes. With that being said, are we being blessed so far? Are we being blessed so far, church? From the opening hymn, Fate of Her Father Living Still, to a special song that was done by Sister Beckford, says, let not the devil, don't let the devil see your tears. God will come true for you. No, folks. It is time for the word. It will come to us by no other than Elder Betty. Is that a stranger to us? But for those who are here for the first time, and for those who are streaming on live, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, Elder Betty is a man of God. 
is an humble individual, a father, a husband, and a grandfather. He will bring to us, thus said the Lord. Please sit back, don't be too relaxed. Take your word, take what applies to you individually and applies. But before he comes, we listen to a very special song of meditation that will be done by Sister Chloe Locke. Happy Sabbath, church. There is no one great amongst us. We're nothing on our own. We make mistakes and often slip. Just come on flesh and bone. But someday.
Happy summer to you all. Truly, it's such a privilege when we can gather into the house of the Lord to give thanks and to give praise. Yes, man, David says, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hmm? Let us sing songs of praise unto his holy, holy name because he is worthy. He's the Lord of this house. So we, when we come together, we should uh, lift up his name, you know, with assurance, knowing that he is God. You know, I want to say uh, welcome to the congregation, especially our visitors. I truly welcome you today for being here. And I trust and hope as you worship with us, you will worship in spirit and in truth. And for those who are watching online, as you watch the service, as you participate, I trust and hope that you will share the link that others, you know, can come and join in and to see and to taste and to know of, you know, the wonderful fellowship that we are having here. Yes, man. You know, it's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. You know, we have been feasting from morning, Elder Prim. You know, and now we have come to the main course. You know, the head, the head of the house is here. You know, and you know, you, you know, he's here and he has prepared a word, you know, to serve you. So I trust and hope, you know, as, as this word goes forth, it will find lodgment in your heart. You know, and today I've found my sermon on the caption, faith and acceptance. Faith and acceptance. Before I go any further, shall we pray? Eternal God and our Father. Today, dear God, here I stand, dear God, to present your word to your people. Lord, I'm just a feeble clay, dear God. If you can use anything, dear Father, please, Jesus, I ask that you use me to the furtherance of your glory. And when time on earth shall be no more, let all the hand and glory, praise go, pray, glory and praise goes up to you. Because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So the scripture reading, which you have already, already read, but for emphasis, let me just run through it again for you. It says, now faith is the substance of things over, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered, uh, offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained, he obtained witness that he was righteous. God, God testified of his gift, and through it, he being dead, still speak. You know, and I love, I love verse 6. Verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, and the first, uh, the first scripture admonishes us that without, um, without um, faith, you can say have faith, but you, without, without um, works, you know, what does it profit you? You understand me? Having faith and no put it to work, it profits you nothing. You know? So, it says here, As your conscience has been quickened by the Spirit, you have seen something of, of the evil, hmm? of sin, of its power, its guilt, its woe. Hmm? And you look upon it with abhorrence. You feel that sin has separated you from God. Hmm? Yes, man. Sin. The sin. The sin problem. You know, it has separated us. You know, and you know, the holy way, you know, we can get back to God is to, you know, to confess, to repent. You know, God love, love one, a person who is willing to repent, who is willing to act on mercy. Yes, man. He says, he says that you are in bondage to the power of evil. The more you struggle to escape evil, the more you, the more 
you realize your helplessness. Your motives are impure. Your heart is unclean. You see that your life has been filled with selfishness and sin. You long to be forgiven, to be cleansed, to be set free, harmony with God's likeness. To him, what you do to obtain it. It is peace that you need. Heaven, forgiveness, and peace, and love to the soul. And I hear it is, he says, that, that peace that you are searching for, you know, that peace you are searching for, that faith, you know, that you want to exercise. Money cannot buy it. You know, money cannot buy it, man. You know, it's a free will from God. It is peace that you need, oh, heaven, forgiveness, and peace, and love that you, that your soul, of your soul. Money cannot buy it. Intellect cannot procure it. Wisdom cannot obtain it. Hmm? You can never hope by your own effort to secure it. But God offer it to you as a gift. Without money and without price. Hmm? In Isaiah 55 verse 1. It is yours if you will but reach out your hands and grasp it. Yeah. The Lord says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be, be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Isaiah 1, 18. Hmm? A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. Ezekiel 26, 34. You have confessed your sins and in, in the heart, put them away. You have resolved to give yourself to God. Now, go to him and ask that he will wash away your sins and give you a new heart. Then believe that he does this because he has promised. This is the lesson which that the gift which God promises us. We must believe, we do receive, and it is ours. Jesus healed people of their diseases. When they had faith in him, when in his power, he helped them in the things which they would see. This inspiring them with confidence in him. Concerning things which they could not see, leading them to believe in his power. To forgive sin. This is plainly, this is plainly stated in the healing of the man with the palsy. Hmm? That he may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Then say he to the man, man who is sick, with the palsy, arise, take up your bed and go. Hmm? Arise, take up your bed and go. Can you imagine, imagine, let me just emphasize here. Can you imagine a person with this disability? You understand? Laying there for many years, you understand me? No one, no one, if, if, he, if he should move us, so somebody has to help him. And here it is that Jesus can look, in, look him in the face and say, take up your bed and walk. Huh? Take up your bed and go to your house. Huh? What, a, what, 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 what a powerful, what a powerful example, you know, of Jesus. Yes, man. And even us today, there are many of us even here in, in church today, we are sick to the point, but all we have to do is just to exercise our faith. You know, look up to Jesus. Sinless is He. Father is he. Father impute His life unto me. He says, "My life of scarlet, my sin of woe." Yes, man, we have to just trust Him, and He will do the rest. Hmm? Then say to Him, to the sick, the palsy arise. Take up 
the bed and go unto thine house. In Matthew 9, verse 6. So also, John, the evangelist says, speaking to the miracles of Christ, these are written, hmm? that he believed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that, that believed he might have life through his name. John 20, 31. From the, from the simple Bible account of how Jesus healed the sick, we may learn something about how to believe in him for the forgiveness of sin. Let us, let us turn to the story of the paralytic at Bethsaida. The poor suffering was helpless. He had not, not used his limb for 38 years. Hmm? Yet Jesus bade, Jesus bade him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. Hmm? I can, I, you know, I cannot just assume, you know, blind Bartimaeus here, lying here. And, you know, for 38 years, I've been lying on my back. Or I be, I've been lying on my side. You understand me? And here comes, no, Jesus comes to me and says, take up my bed and walk. Maybe, you know, you want to question and Jesus say, Lord, how can I walk? I've been here for 38 years. I can't move. My limbs are weak. You know, but Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't say that to him. Jesus said, take up thy bed and walk. You understand me? And by faith, you know, he exercised his faith, man. You know, and then there, there it is. You know, he rise and take up his bed. You know, and he go. The sick man might have said, Lord, if thou wilt make me whole, I will obey thy word. But no. He believed Christ's word. Believed that he was made whole. And he made the effort at once. And uh, at once he will walk. And he did walk. He acted, acted on the power. He was made whole. In like manner. You are. You are a sinner. You cannot atone for your past sin. You cannot change your health. And make yourself holy. But God promised to do all this for you. Through Christ. You, you believe that. Believe the promise. So Christ has made, made so many promises to us. You know. And one thing for sure. If he make a promise to you. He will not go back on it. You understand me? It stands there. It stands out. You understand me? All you have to do is just claim it. You know. And once you claim it by faith. You know. He will restore it unto you. You know. So many promises, you know, man, you know, he has made unto us. You know, you know, he said to us, why worry? Why are you worrying? Eh? Eh? He says to us, take no thought of the marrow man. You know, the marrow prepared for himself. And yet, you know, we want to, you know, it's as if you are falling off his, in his face. You understand me? Trying to put, put him at the back burner. You understand me? We have seen many instances where um, many of us, at times, we have sickness, rock our bone. You know? Christ is the last resort that we turn to. You understand me? You know, we tend to go to, go, we tend to want to go. You know, there are many who would want to run to. So, what you call it? The so-called um, mother woman. You know, before you see Christ. You understand me? You know, many, many, many would want to go to the doctor. Just as a woman with this your blood. But 12 long years, this fellow that she has. Jesus was her last resort. You understand me? And we should never put Jesus to be our last resort. We should put him first. Yes, man, we should put Jesus first. I'm talking about faith here, you know. You have to exercise your faith. You understand me? Yes, man, we have to have faith, brother Green. He says, he says, you confess your sins and give yourself to God. You will, you will serve him just as truly as you do this. God will fulfill his word to you. If you believe the promises, believe that you are forgiven and cleansed. God supplies the, the act. The, God supplies the pack for you, made whole. Just as Christ gave the paralytic power to walk, when he, when he, he that was sick was healed, is so it's your belief. 
Do not wait to feel that you are made whole, but say, I believe it is so, not because I feel it, but because God has promised. Not because I feel it, but because what God has promised me. Claim your promises in the name of Jesus. He says, Jesus said, what things soever he desire, when he, when he pray, believe, believe them that he receive them, and he shall have them. In Mark eleven twenty four, <coughs> there is a condition to this promise that we pray for pray according to the will of God, but it is the will. It is the will of God to cleanse us from sins, to make us his children, and to enable us to live a holy life. So we may ask for these blessings and believe that we receive them and thank God that we have received them. It is our privilege to go to Jesus and be cleansed. And to stand before the law without shame and remorse. These is therefore, they, no. This is therefore, therefore no, no condemnation. There is no condemnation to them that walk in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans eight verse one. In sport, you are not, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. He were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as the Lamb. <clears throat> without blemish and without spot. In 1 Peter 1 verse 18 and 19. To this through the simple act of believing, God, the Holy Spirit, has begotten, begotten a new life in your, in your heart. You are as a child born into the family of God. And he loves you as he loved his son. Now that you have given yourself to Jesus, do not draw back. Do not take yourself away from him. There's a danger, you know, the Bible, the Bible you know, declare to us, you know, there's a danger in turning back, you know. And he, he, ad he admonish us, he admonish us that when you come to Christ and you turn, you turn, you turn back, Elder Prim, he says you are like dog to your vomit. So, so brethren, you have to be careful. You understand me? This once, once you take up Christ, Remember, the road, the road will not be smooth, you know. It will not be easy. But listen, whatever you are going through, he's there with you. He promised us that he will never leave us. Now he will never forsake us. All you have to do is just believe. Hold firm to the belief of God. And, you, and Christ will do the rest. Yeah, yes, man. He will do the rest for you. It says here, Take yourself away, away from me, but, but day by day, I am, I am Christ. I have given myself to him and asked him to give you his spirit and to keep you by his grace as it is by giving yourself to God and believing him that you become a child so you are to live in him. The apostle say, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Colossians 2 verse 6. Yeah, man, as he has accepted Christ, you know, you must walk, walk through him. Bash in his glory, man. You know, feel happy in him. Don't, don't care what life may show at you. You know, go with confidence knowing that. You know, you have been with Christ. You have made a commitment. You, you know, you have found yourself. You have a relationship with him. You hold him in your bosom. You understand me? Don't care what the devil may at you because he's going to come at you, you know. Because his, 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 his wish is to kill, to, uh, to kill and destroy. But Christ said, I am come 
that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You understand me? So many of these promises God has given to us. You understand me? And we take it for granted. Brethren, as believers in Christ, let us take God as his word. You understand me? In Psalms, in, in, in the book of Psalms, 105, 109, 109, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, the word of God is here to direct you as you go along life journey. You understand? You know, ask God to help you. Ask him to give you the strength. Ask him to give you faith to hold on. No matter what, the kids of life may trust you. You don't know, just believe and, you know, ask him and say, ask him, speak to him, talk to him, just ask like a friend. You know, he says, come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, whatever you need, man, come and ask. I'm here to supply. I am your supplier. You understand me? I am your distributor. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he never fails. You know, whatever you need, God is here to give it unto you. Brethren, let's not take things in our own hand and believe that we can do this or we can do that. No, we need his help. We need his guidance. We need his protection as we go along life journey. Some seems to feel that they must be on probation and must prove to the Lord that they are reformed before they can claim his, his blessing. But they may claim the blessing of God even now. They must have his grace, the spirit of Christ, to help their infirmities, or they cannot resist evil. Jesus loves to have us come to him just as we are sinful, helpless, dependent. Yes, man, we may come with all our weakness, our folly, our sinfulness, and fall at his feet, impatient. It is his, it is, it is his love to encircle us in his arms of his love and to bind up our wound. Yeah. yeah, we have our wounds. You understand me? We have our wounds to be healed, man. But what? No doctor cannot heal it. It's only that Dr. Jesus. You know? Yes, man. You have our, heal, our wounds to be cleansed. Hmm? To cleanse us from all impurities. Here is where thousands fail. They do not believe that Jesus pardon them they do not believe and you know you know this word believe you know you know is an action is an action word you know you know you just don't look at it and just take it simply it's an action word you have to put it to work yeah when you put it to work then it will work for you yes man The um, person, all individually, they do not take God at his word. Hmm? It is the privilege of all who comply with the condition to know for themselves that pardon is freely extended to every sin. Put away the suspicious, the suspicion that God promises are not meant for you. You have to put it away. Don't have no, don't have no doubt in your, in, your, in, your, in your heart or in your mind to say that, um, God, yes, God has promised me this and God has promised me that. And you know, it won't work. Whatsoever he promised, he stands on his promise. We must claim it and we must believe it. Yes, man. We have to do that. This is, they are for every repentant transgressor strength and grace grace love being provided through christ to be brought by ministering angels to every believing soul none are so sinful that they cannot find strength purity and righteousness in jesus hmm? look here what your condition is you know you can once you you avail yourself you can find that strength you can't find that hope. You can't find whatsoever you need. God is there to supply. Jesus who died, died for them, them, is waiting to strip them of their garment, stained and polluted with sin and 
sin and to put upon them the white robe of righteousness. Today, brethren, God want to, God want to dress you. He want to put on his robe of righteousness and upon you. You understand me? You, you is the problem. You are you. You know, you have to make the way, you know. God is there willing and ready, you know, to dress you, to deck you, to decorate you in his robe of righteousness. But all he wants us to do is just to be, will, to be willing, believing by faith. And then, you know, he will do what he promises. He bids, he bids line not to, oh, sorry. God does not deal with us as as prime men do men deal with, with one another. In other words, God does not God does not deal with us as the way you know you and I deal with each other. You understand me? Yeah man. He is a God of love. He is a God of truth. He is a God of justice. Whatsoever you need, just ask him and he will he will deliver it to you. It is true, the thought of mercy, love and strength, compassion. He says, let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man is taught. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Hmm? And it's Isaiah, Isaiah 55, verse 7. I have blasted out, blasted out hmm, of a thick cloud thy transgression, and of cloud that, that shine in Isaiah 44, verse, two, verse 22. I have no pleasure in, in, the, dead of the, in the dead of the wicked. Hmm? Let me see, let me go back. Sorry. Says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourself and live. He, he, hmm? Ezekiel 18 32. Satan is really, is really, is ready to steal away the blessing, assurance of God. He desires to take every glimpse, every glimmer of hope and every ray of light from the soul. That is his plan, man, to deceive us. But you must not permit him to do so. Hmm? This do not give ears to the temper, the temper, but say, Jesus has died that I might live. He loves me and will not that I should perish. I have a compassionate Heavenly Father, and although I have abused his love, though the blessing he has given me have been squandered, I will arise and go to my Father and say, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servant. Yeah? That's a parable of, that's in law in in 15 there. Yeah. It bears record of three parables. The last kind, the last sheep, and the last son. You understand me? Yes, this, um, and we know, the, we, know the, we know the story well. You know, he asks his father for his, his, his portion, you know, that um, owes to him. You know, and what, and his father never hesitates. And we, have to, we, we must be careful, you know. Growing up as a young man or a young woman, we have, must be careful of the things that we ask for. Because, listen to me, there are times we believe and think that we are going on the right path. You know, you know we, we sit there and the devil has thrown things at us. You understand me? And we tend to heal to it, not knowing that we are going down to our dilemma, to our demise. You understand me? This is what to this young boy. He asks for what his position, and he gets it. And he goes and squander it. He goes and waste it. You understand me? We are righteous living. But the fact remains still. Brethren, we just don't truly understand the love that God has for us. Don't care how far we have hold here in sin. The song says, 
have wandered far away from home. Hmm? Away from God. Lord, I'm coming home. And that's, and, and that's the key thing, you know, Elder. You know, the key thing about it, you know, don't care how much. You know, you have wandered, you are liberated living. You have lived a life, you know, that, you know, men condemn you or whatsoever. But just remember, just remember the word, Lord, I am coming home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when you can remember home, you know, when you can remember your, 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 your protector, your provider, and you can call to him and say, Daddy, I am coming home. Yeah, that's what, what he wants, you know. Yeah, man, that's what he wants. Yeah, yeah, just remember. The parable tells you how the wanderer will, will receive when he was yet a great way up. His father saw him and had compassion, run and fell on his neck and kissed him. Hmm? Don't care how much, don't care how much you messed up. And don't care how much you, you know, you live and you go there and you live your life. But then the pastor says, can a mother, can a mother tender love cease to what the child should be here? You know, and there are times, there are times, you know, you, you know, as fathers, as fathers and mothers, you know, you at times would want to punish the child, you know, elder. But the, that mother stand in your way because what? You know, that child has come, has come from, her, from, from her, her body, from her womb. You know, and she know the pain, what she goes through, know what she feel. You understand me? And so it is, you know, even, even a twin, they say that whenever you try to hurt one, the other one feel it. You understand me? So, you know, as parents, we have to be careful. Yeah, man, we have to be careful. Mm. But ever this, but, eh, but even this parable, tender and touching as it is, come short of, of expressing the infinite compassion of the heavenly Father. The Lord declares by his prophet, I have, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. That's the love that Christ has for us. Never change. It continues through the ages, you know, and it will continue until he comes. You know, never changes. Amen. Therefore, with loving kindness, he have drawn, he have drawn thee in Jeremiah 31. Yes, man. While the sinner is yet far, far from the father's house, wasting his substance in this strange country, the father's heart is yearning over him. And every longing awakened in the soul to return to God is but, but the tender pleading of his spirit wooing, entreating, drawing the wanderers to his father's heart of love. With the rich promises of the Bible before you, can you give place to doubt? Can you believe that when the poor sinner long to return, long to forsaken his sin, hmm, the Lord does strongly withhold him from coming to his feet in, rep in repentance, away with such thought, nothing can hurt you. Nothing can hurt your own soul more than to en entertain such a conception of our Heavenly Father. He hates sin, but loves the sinner. Yes, Christ hates the sin that we committed, but he loves us as sinner, you know, and his wish that, you know, should, we should turn from our sinful attitude and turn to him. Yes, and he gave himself in the person of Christ that all who would might have been swayed away we hear eternal blessing in the kind, in the kingdom of glory. What stronger or more tender language could you have 
been employed than has chosen in which to express his love towards us, he declares. Can a woman, have I already repeat, can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they, they may forget yet, yet will not forget thee in Isaiah 49 verse 15. So, so um, this is strongly saying then, you know, as a father, the parable, at the parable there in Luke with the prodigal son, you know, from, the, from day one that he leave, his father was there sitting, you know, his heart was out there looking, you know, looking out there, no, no, not just looking like from here to there, you know, he was looking afar, he was looking far, realizing and knowing, you know, in his mind and, you know, saying that, Lord, Please bring him back home to me. You understand me? Yeah. But you, listen to me, man. The love that Christ has for us, you know, is, um, is, is such a love that, you know, it unquenchably. It does not stop here. You know, it just keeps going and going. If you should hope in, if you should, if you should speak of a certain man of love, you know, better green, you just keep going, 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 going. Because that love never ends. You know, never ends. That's the love that God has for us. Yeah, you know, don't care how much. We have messed up. God love, you know, had arms is out your wide open, you know, waiting, you know, for us. All you have to, have to do is just to ask of him. Just to ask of him. Yes? Yes? I've wandered away, man. I've lived my life, you know, I've lived my life out here in the world, you know, enjoying life, pleasure, you know, but here's a sweeter life awaits me. You understand me? There's a sweeter life that no words cannot comprehend. You understand me? That love that Christ has for us. You understand me? Yeah, people are craving in this world now for riches. But I can tell you no rich man, no rich man ever live happy. All his mind is on his asset. You know? But when you, when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that joy, that happiness that flows through you, you know? You know, and El Brother Green, you know, when that love, that love, that joy, you know, others can see. Because what? You are the light. You know, you are the light. You cannot hid. You know? That's the type of life God, that God wants us to live, you know. Want us to live. You understand me? But we can't do it, do it on our own. He's asking us, to, all he's asking of us to do. Young man, young woman, Christ is saying to us today, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is rest awaiting us. We cannot, we cannot attain it by ourselves. But by God's grace and mercy, by his strength, by his power, we can achieve it. We can obtain it. I trust and hope today that as we worship God, let us purpose in our heart, you know, believe his promises, take him at his word, and when time and her shall be no more, when he shall put in his appearance, we shall hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. This is my few words to you today. Praise the Lord, church. The word has been delivered from the man of God. I hope you have been blessed. We want to say thank you to Helda Betty for bringing us the word. May God continue to guide and keep you so you may continue to spread. Thus said the Lord. Please stand with your hymnals in hand and turn to the hymn 457. That's four, five, seven. Please stand, everyone.
Praise the Lord. What a beautiful number indeed. I love to tell the story. It will be the one, old, old story of Jesus and his love. That is the love that we need today, not the love of the world because it will fade away. It is temporary, but God's love is eternal. It lasts forever. Bow your heads as we pray, Father. Again, we give you thanks for your matchless love. We give you thanks for your eternal love. We give you thanks for your permanent love. We give you thanks for your infinite love to finite man. We give you thanks for the words we heard from your servant as he delivered your words in whatever way you have allowed him. As we listen, we recognize that you're a loving and tender God. And even though a mother's tender love may cease from the child she bears, your love will never leave us. It is that love why you left heaven and came to earth and went to the cross so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Today we can repeat as in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And even though we were in the gutter most, you have gone for us and you have brought us out of the gutter and put us to the uttermost. Father, we give you thanks for that much less love again. And even though we were wayward and deep in sin, Lord, we have seen a great display of your love. And we join David, Lord, that, Lord, we have sinned against you and you only have we done wrong. We ask that you may have mercy upon us. We're happy that your mercies never fail. Bless this congregation. Bless your people. Bring them out, Lord. Help them to know that even though they are chief of sinners in their own ways and eyes, that you still love them. Thank you again, Lord, for that love. And may that love continue to draw us even closer to you. Go with us as we go. Bring us back as we continue to worship. May we fellowship. Again, thanks for the speaker. Thanks for the words. Bless his family and bless him. When heaven and earth shall be no more, save us, we pray. We pray for Sister Gifford. Gifford, at this moment, as she went to the hospital because of illness, we pray, Lord, that you may touch her. We pray for Brother Hilton at this moment, Lord, as he struggles with his illness. Oh, Lord, we know that these are the things that mark our path as humanity. We pray for all the other individuals among us who are not doing well physically. We pray that your love and your healing power will reach them. Thanks again for everything. And when all is said and done again, give us a place in your kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' holy name. Dismiss us, Lord, with the blessings we pray. As be seated before we are hushed out please permit me for an announcement for the following young people please meet with sister Jacqueline Jackson around the back that's Chloe Locke Adora Green Akira Brown Abigail Frame Samoya Pierce Sierra Bloomfield Kalila Malcolm Omar Thomas Jr., Romano Ilton, Shadwin Ilton. The mixed choir, that's the children's and the youth choir, will be singing next Sabbath. 
practice commerce at 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Will the praise team come forward as we've been ushered How Thanks for coming. I hope you have been blessed thus far. Please return for Bible class and AY this evening. <laughs>